everyone and um, so today's video is how I do my ratio control it, this is a requested video um, from Laura Wiggum I hope I've said it right I'm sorry if I got it wrong what I'm just showing you is I'm using my NSI liquid and my NSI sheer pink now this is how I personally do my ratio control everyone is completely different and depends on what product you use as well and the consistency of your beads will be different to what products you use and how you do it. Now what I do is I get all my air bubbles out of my brush and I swipe two times off the jar and then two times in my powder. So it's a one, two, one, two. Now if that is a good ball, it's not too runny, it's not too dry. If it was too dry then you'd still see a bit of acrylic powder particles and I'll show you that um, in the video as well. Now as you just see I've just swiped it the once and then dabbed it once into my powder. Now you can see there's a lot of liquid in that brush. Now if there's a lot of liquid in that brush then it's going to be a bit too runny to apply with. So if you wanted to you can dab out the excess liquid onto the pot, cotton bag, cotton, cotton bag, cotton tissue whatever sort of thing just to get that excess liquid out now I've just showed you um, doing it the one two one two now it's all about control with your brush as well now, as you can see I've got fully control of what I'm doing I'm sorting out my side walls and then once I've, I'm happy with my side walls and my cuticle area I stroke the product downwards now ratio control is the most important thing as well but it's also about control with your brush you don't want it to flood the cuticle or your side wall areas loads of people do have struggles doing that I did when I first started it was like a waterfall but practice does make perfect now I've just showed a wetter bead and, and still it's a little bit wetter than normal and it runs just a little bit faster but I still have that controlness with my brush now it's not flooding anywhere it's not I to me this is how I work and this is how I have full control of my brush and what I am doing now as you can see around the cuticle area it doesn't look like it's flooded back it looks quite good ball ball nail <laughs> So as you can see, one, two method. So it's, obviously it just depends on um, products you use as well. Now that was my one, two. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. It's not flooding anywhere. I do the second bead um, just to do a smaller ball. And you do see it running down to the side a little bit. But that's obviously because when I tilted the tip a bit, it's going to, gravity is going to make it fall downwards. Now... If you are struggling with flooding your cuticle areas, I don't know if um, you're tilting the client's hands down or the nails down or your nail trainer downwards. Because if you do them around the cuticle area, you just want to place your finger or your nail trainer downwards so gravity falls down so the liquid um, and the products doesn't run back into the cuticle if you've got it flat then it is going to have a chance of it going back into your cuticle area which will cause your lifting problems and will cause the flooding issues I don't know what I was doing there <laughs> So one, two, and then I've done just the one drop there just to try and see if it'll be. Now as you can see, you've still got the white areas around the edges. Now this indicates that the ball is just a little bit too dry. Um, it, can, it is still workable with, but it's still just that little bit dryness in what you would do. And when you place it down, sometimes it won't, you can't use it, it'll just pop straight off like that. Um, so you don't want to have it where you can still see the powder markings on the inside. Now I'll try doing a really wet bead for you. Now as you can see the liquid in my brush, you can just see it shining. You can see there's a lot of liquid in there and that's just going to be a bit too runny. And it just does that little bit of a drop as it would with gravity because gravity will always fall. As 
this is my two ball method and that to me is what I call a really good bead it's not too dry it's not too wet it just works good for me I don't know if you wanted to give that a, a go but as you can see it doesn't look like it's flooding it's not moving it's all about the controlness what you're doing with your brush now I always work from side to side and then I work down in the middle and the center so as because your side walls and your cuticle area and the main area is there you'd want to concentrate on them most so I've just got my nail trainer you're gonna have to forgive the lost finger to the left <laughs> she had an incident um, so as you can see it's my one two one two and a bit of a hair on my brush so get all your air bubbles out one two one two now I work my first bead I place more in the middle now in the middle is your strongest point of what's gonna not it's, it's like less chance of your nail breaking so it's your apex area so that has to be your strongest point of the nail now I always work in the middle tapping it from side to side and then I brush the product downwards now as you can see it's not flooding anywhere it's not runny it's all about the controlness of your brush the second ball I would place is at the cuticle area now the cuticle area, as you are going to see, as I stated before, you just need to tip it downwards just a little bit more so the product doesn't run back into the cuticle. And then all about the controlness with your brush and the speed that you work with it as well. I just had a hair in there, so I had to get that out. Good size ball bead, tilt the finger or nail trainer down slightly and let the product do all its work. So the gravity will make the product go downwards instead of going back into the cuticle area. Tapping side to side, making sure that it doesn't run into your side walls and like I said it's all about the controlness that, you need, that you're going to have. And if it has gone into your side walls, then as you just saw, just go down the side of it with your brush and then hopefully it doesn't cause lifting. I've just try I tried doing a close-up, as you can see around the cuticle area, it's very, very neat and tidy, so it's not gone back into it. Um, I really do hope this video has helped you, uh, Laura, or anybody else. Um, if you do have any more comments, queries, or any questions or videos, I am more than happy to help you. Um, I, I was helped on YouTube, and I love the fact that I can try and help others as well. So, I'll leave you guys with the rest of the video. Um, I really do hope this video has helped. Um, if I think I've, if you feel I've missed anything out, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, thanks. Bye.